F N N C Publishing is blessed to present the first book to dispel the stigma of slave. This is the paradigm shift we have been waiting for. We are freeing ourselves in the past from the present. We are either part of the solution or part of the problem. When people ask me how many children do I have, I say all of them. May we honor our ancestors in truth and spirit. I thank my ancestors. I thank my ancestors for the here and now. I know I could not be here without them. I thank my parents who are related to my ancestors. I know they have done the best that they know how. Even though it may seem like I am in hell, my ancestors have provided a sanctuary for me and those like me. They have proven that they love me more than I love myself. No healing can take place until the illness is acknowledged and understood. Contents for why we shouldn't call our ancestors slaves, part two of five. Understanding the definition, the original definition for slave, the connotative meaning of slave, word history of slave, from Slav and Slav to slave, a unique word and situation, slavery, the difference, slavery, the cultural transplant, slavery, the adjusted definition, slave, confusion in the language, Part 2. Understanding the Definitions The following two quotes are from Dr. Naeem Akbar's book, Know Thyself. On page 2 he says, quote, The first function of education is to provide identity. On page 5 he says, Miseducation in its foundation is the cultivation of an alien identity. When people are taught that they are somebody who they are not, then this forms the basis of being miseducated. Unquote. Dr. Naeem Akbar, Know Thyself. In order to understand why we should not call our ancestors slaves, we must start with clear definitions of the words slave and slavery. Once we have this understanding, we can begin to look at the effect of applying the word slave to our ancestors and indirectly to ourselves. We can begin to correct the confusion in the language. This will open a door so that we can begin to effectively analyze and correct the negative effects that slavery and its thought process has had on us. This book began when I was writing an article for an African-American newspaper about slavery, I wanted to get a clear definition of the word slave for accuracy. As I read the definition, it hit me. The definition did not fit the actions of the people we call slaves, our ancestors. After that, I looked up the word slave in every dictionary I came across. In the process, I also looked up the word nigger and had a similar experience. What is the difference between a slave, a prisoner, a bond servant, or a captive? What is the difference in slavery and other forms of human captivity and servitude? In discussions on the subject, I have noticed that when most people use the words slave and slavery, they use them interchangeably with prisoner, captive, hostage, bondservant, and other forms of human servitude and bondage. I saw that there was a difference in how these words were used, what people meant, and how they were defined in English dictionaries. When people applied the words slave and slavery to other times and forms of human captivity and servitude, they are not talking about the same type of conditions that Euro-Americans and Europeans imposed on Africans in slavery. 
The word slave has become a buzzword, and for different people, it may mean different things. But whatever the interpretation or meaning, being a slave is still a negative thing. For a common understanding and clarity of thought, let us look at the dictionary's original definition of the word slave, and then see if the definition fits our ancestors. The original definition, slave. The oldest dictionary I could find in the library was the American Dictionary of the English Language by Noah Webster, LLD, published in Springfield, Massachusetts by G&C, 1867. Slave, noun. One, a person who is held in bondage to another one who is wholly subject to the will of another, one who has no freedom of action, but whose personal service is wholly under the control of another. Number two, one who has lost the power of resistance, or one who surrenders himself to any power whatever. Written 120 years later, the following definition is taken from the Webster's New 20th Century Dictionary, unabridged, second edition, 1979. Quote, slave, derived from the word Slav, which was first applied to captives of Slavic origin in southeastern Europe. 1. A bondservant, divested of all freedom and personal rights a human being who is owned by and wholly subject to the will of another, as by capture, purchase, or birth. 2. One who has lost the power of resistance, or one who surrenders himself to any power whatever, as a slave to passion, lust, ambition, etc. Unquote. Note. As the thought process of slavery was applied, many people thought that black African people were not human beings, or at least the people that they could identify with or relate to. What do they mean by the word another? I take it to mean one who is not the same, not like self, not of kindred spirit, or the same genetic and cultural history, as European is different from African. Therefore, According to the original definition, white people could not be slaves to white people, and black people could not be slaves to black people. They could be prisoners, hostages, captives, and servants, but not slaves. According to the definition, one could not just be a slave. If a person is a slave, he or she must be a slave to someone or something. When we call our ancestors slaves, to what? or to whom are we saying they were slaves? The connotative meaning, slave. We see it all the time in the movies. Under slavery, many black Africans had to act like slaves in order to fool the God complex in their oppressors, to get off the chain, avoid painful punishment, protect their children, survive, and find an opportunity to get free. They were acting out the connotative meaning of slave. As a result, some of us do not understand that the black Africans in slavery were just acting. They were putting up a front to hide how they really felt and their true intentions. Black American Africans who do not understand this will have trouble identifying with their own ancestors. The word slave defines the dominant characteristic of a person. What type of person would a slave be? Who would give up their right to be human? What would it actually mean to be a slave according to the definition? Such a person is not the product of natural development, but is man-made and artificial. In this context, it means that the slave would not be able to resist the will of their human oppressors. A slave would not even want to resist the oppressor's will because the oppressor would not want the slave to want to resist. 
A slave would want what the oppressor wants, even if it is to the detriment of the slave. According to the original definition, a slave is wholly subject to the will of another. A slave is one whose mindset and will, meaning desires, are broken and possessed by one of a different spirit, mindset, and will. This means mind control. In order for this to happen, a slave's beliefs and thoughts must synchronize with the so-called slave master's beliefs and thoughts. When this happens, a slave speaks and acts according to the will of another. In this case, the so-called European slave master enemy. A slave would be like a mindless zombie with no sense of self. In short, a slave would be a living contradiction to his or her own soul and spirit. In the end, the slave will engage in behavior which only benefits the so-called slave master. Because people believe this image, it makes it hard for people to have respect for black people in general, even some black people. It is an image that helps keep racism alive. Word history, slave. Understanding how the word slave came into existence also gives us some insight into his meaning. The Henry Holt Encyclopedia of Word and Phrase Origins, 1990, gives us a historical understanding of the word slave. Quote, slave, Slav. The word slave has nothing to do with Athens in the Periclean Age when there were twice as many people in bondage as free, or with the African trade that created four centuries of suffering. Slave came into the language long after the former and long before the latter in humanity, deriving from the name of a tribe living in what is now Poland and other areas of Eastern Europe, unquote. This being the case, where and how did the word slave come to be? Where did the term slave come from? How does the history of the word slave relate to its definition? What does the timeline say? The Henry Holt Encyclopedia of Word and Phrase Origins, 1990, continues, quote, The name of these people meant noble or illustrious in their own tongue. But in about 6 A.D., they were conquered by German tribes from the west and forced to serve their conquerors or sold into bondage to the Romans. The Romans called them Sclavus, which became the medieval Latin Sclavus, a Slav captive. This term of contempt applied to any bondsman or servile person. Sclavus became Esclav in French and came into English as Sklav, of retaining the C until about the 16th century when slave was first used. The word Slav for the race of people in Eastern Europe comes from the same source, the proud noble tribe whose name underwent a complete metamorphosis." Unquote. How does the evolution of the word slave relate to the original definition of the word slave? Were these people divested of all personal rights and wholly subject to the will of their captors? Had they lost the power of resistance? Were the captors and the captive white people? Were they more alike than different? The American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, 4th edition, 2000, word history, basically says the same thing. Quote, the word slave, S-L-A-V-E, first appears in English around 1290, spelled S-C-L-A-V-E. The spelling is based on Old French Esclave. E-S-C-L-A-V-E. The spelling of the English slave, S-L-A-V-E, closer to its original Slavic form, first appears in English 
in 1538, unquote. From Sklav and Slav to Slave The word slave was supposed to have evolved from the words Esklav, Sklav, and Slav. If the word slave evolved from these words, the meaning did not transfer. Sklav and Slav, as we have seen, is the name of captured Slavic tribes that meant noble people in their language. Therefore, the only relationship that the word slave has with Slav or Slav is in the letters used to spell the words, not in the meaning. Considering this, we can conclude that the word slave was reformed to fit a new condition that had not existed before the African Holocaust, the Ma'afa, known as the Atlantic Slave Trade. The Difference Slavery If you do not understand slavery, everything you think you know about freedom will be skewed, just as all cars are not Cadillacs. In the same way, all forms of human trafficking, captivity, and servitude were not slavery. Accordingly, you would not use the word ice when you mean water. Cultures that have never seen snow have no word for snow. Just as there is a direct relationship between thought and action, there is a direct relationship between the definition, the thought process, events, and actions of slavery. New Knowledge By the 1400s, through their trading with China, the Middle East, Asia, the northern parts of Africa before and including Egypt, the Europeans were acquiring new knowledge in the areas of science, technology, animal, and human nature. They built universities and libraries to bring all this knowledge together. Compared to the Roman days, Europe was in the high-tech mode when they started the African slave trade. How else could they capture, transport, and trade millions of black Africans? With their new knowledge, they created a new type of human captivity and servitude to fill their need for mass production. This new knowledge gave them new power, as knowledge is power. What made them think they could control and make slaves of millions of Africans? What made them think they could make us conform to the original and adjusted definitions of slave? New Words The words slave and slavery were new words designed to fit a new and different situation and process. If slavery was no different than the forms of human captivity and trafficking before it, there would have been no need to develop new words. Since slavery was a system of human trafficking and bondage that had never existed before, neither did the words slavery and slave. That is why the word slave, S-L-A-V-E, did not come into existence until around 1530, according to the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, 4th edition, 2000 Word History. The Atlantic slave trade started at about the same time. Is it coincidence? The timeline tells the story. The word slave, S-L-A-V-E, appears in English at about 1538. The transatlantic slave trade began in about 1518. The images of slavery tell the story. I know of no other system of human trafficking and servitude that have produced these types of images. These images tend to cause black African Americans and others to look away and not take a closer look at the meaning of slavery. In the introduction of Stanley M. Elkins' book, Slavery, Nathan Glazier, the author of numerous books on race and ethnicity, points out the difference in slavery and other forms of human captivity and servitude. 
Glazer writes, quote, The slave could not, by law, be taught to read or write. He could not practice any religion without the permission of his master, and could never meet with his fellows for religious or any other purposes, except in the presence of a white, and finally, if a master wished to free him, every legal obstacle was used to thwart such action. This is not what slavery meant in the ancient world, in medieval and early modern Europe, or in Brazil and the West Indies. Unquote. Chancellor Williams was one of the greatest historians ever. He devoted his life to answering the questions that Tom Burrell asked in the introduction of his book, Brainwashed. If you don't know who Chancellor Williams was, look him up. His book, The Destruction of Black Civilization, Great Issues of a Race, from 4500 B.C. to 2000 A.D., is a must-read. This is what he says about the issues on page 268. Quote, Up to the 16th century, the people we are calling slaves were not slaves in the modern sense, but laborers either captured as prisoners of war or persons imprisoned for various offenses. So during the first stages of the slave trade, many African chiefs and kings actually thought they were supplying workers needed abroad and at a great profit to themselves. They had had no experience with the white man's slave system or its equation with race, unquote. The Culture Mind Transplant Slavery Culture is the mind of the people. It is the framework of human society. It encompasses our world view. It contains the building blocks of our individual beliefs, values, attitudes, morals, customs, actions, and the results we get. By definition, slavery was designed to make black African people in America wholly subject to the will of another, which would be the European American people, to have no freedom of action and to be wholly under their control with no power to resist. The word work is not even mentioned in the original definition. Making money and becoming a world power was meant to be a byproduct of slavery. Therefore, a mass culture mind transplant was necessary. The transplant meant removing the African mindset and replacing it with the American European mindset. It was the equivalent of taking out the chicken's mind and replacing it with the duck's mind. Before slavery, the American and European way of life were about as opposite as black and white, day and night. Before the transatlantic slave trade, the people who were forced into servitude looked like the people they served or that captured them. Their cultures were more similar than different. This is because natural barriers kept people in the same general regions. This was not the case with the European invasion of Africa. Under slavery, we lost our African cultures, disconnected from our ancestors, and the process that created us. The so-called slave master's beliefs, values, worldview, and concept of God became ours. Despite the transplant, the African spirit could not be removed, and that is why we practice European culture in an African way. Using their values, beliefs, mindset, and concept of God has caused us to view ourselves, each other, and anything African through their eyes. Understanding the culture mind transplant is crucial to understanding why we think, believe, and act like we do, and why we are so vulnerable to racism and the idea of white supremacy. This explains why we are doing it to ourselves. It answers the question that Tom Burrell asked in the introduction of Brainwashed. It explains why there is so much division and conflict in our communities and families. It explains the disproportionately high rates 
of self-destructive behavior that we see all across America. What is the history of America's attitudes towards black people in America and in Africa? If we look at ourselves through their eyes, what can we expect? In addition, if we believe our ancestors were slaves, we must see ourselves as descendants of slaves, and we will act according to what we think we are. This was not an infusion of a belief system. It was a forced mass mind transplant. Understanding the transplant is a necessary step in defending ourselves and our children from racism and the idea of white supremacy. In effect, the culture mind transplant is a process of slavery that was also recognized by Carter G. Woodson in 1933. Instead of the word education, we could use the words knowledge, information, or culture. In the preface of The Miseducation of the Negro, Woodson said, quote, The problem of holding the Negro down, therefore, is easily solved. When you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. His education makes it necessary. Unquote. Note, of course, our individual experiences contribute to our individual behavior, but our individual behavior springs from our spirit, genetics, and a common thought process called culture. The process. The way slavery was implemented is part of the difference, definition, and meaning of slavery. This process was methodical, relatively swift, very brutal, and based on what Europeans knew about animal and human nature. Understanding the dynamics of the culture mind transplant is key to understanding the difference in slavery and other forms of human trafficking and servitude. We did not give up our African cultures because we liked European culture more or better. This change was forced on us by the process of reward and punishment and was sustained by negative propaganda in every American institution up through the days of Jim Crow and 100 years of lynching. In the early stages of being in slavery, most parents and adults did not pass on what they knew about their original cultures and beliefs in order to protect their children. Children will tell what they know. This is part of the process that you won't see in the movies. Black people were severely punished for practicing any African customs. In conjunction with being punished for practicing African cultures, getting caught learning how to read and write would bring severe punishment and even death for all black African captives to see. At that time, the government, the churches, the schools, and businesses ignored or supported this practice. This created a great void in the spirit and minds of Africans in America because culture is a basic human need. It supplies order and unity and a certain degree of predictability in every society. Human beings and most animals cannot live without it. Everyone needs to believe in something and to have order in their lives. We needed to fill the culture void and we used European culture to fill it as a survival tactic. Then it was passed on from generation to generation. Eventually European culture became the only thing we knew. Long after we lost our African cultures, we still found ourselves under attack by racism, Jim Crow, and the judicial system. This void was further filled when they began to let us into their churches and schools, which they had denied us access to until the end of segregation and the Jim Crow era. As we were being digested into their systems, we did not understand the effect that it will continue to have on us. As a result of this process, few of us have any desire to educate ourselves about African cultures 
or to understand what happened to us in Africa under colonialism or in America under slavery. It has caused many of us to have little compassion for black people and to believe that we can do little to help ourselves as a people. This was the process that separated us from our African beliefs and cultures. The combination of elements. The timing is what made it new. The combination of events is what made slavery different. Without going into detail, the main events are the scale of it, the numbers taken, was unmatched by any other form of human trafficking and bondage, the number that died in the process of slavery, the Middle Passage, crossing the Atlantic Ocean, six to eight weeks packed in boats like sardines, the seasoning camps, boot camps for slavery, the dehumanization and propaganda, the extreme physical torture, the amount of time, the culture mind transplant. The fact that it was legal and sanctioned by every European nation, including the U.S. government, is another factor that makes slavery and colonialism different. Where other types of captives and prisoners had some rights by law, under slavery, the black African people were meant to have no rights at all. Anything that would normally be considered immoral or a crime in other cultures could be done to the so-called slave. By law, they would be slaves for life, and their children's children were bound to inherit the same status. Although other people may have experienced some of the elements or events of slavery, none have experienced all. All the events that occurred under slavery equal the definition and meaning of slavery. The adjusted definition slave. If it ain't broke, why fix it? Why we shouldn't call our four parents slaves was first published in 1993. Before that, the definition of slave had gone virtually unchanged for over 100 years. Now dictionaries have adjusted the definition. I can only wonder if the lexicologists had been influenced by the pamphlet. Today, the word slave is used loosely. It has become a buzzword that is used to motivate people to act. It has been applied to almost every captive situation except prisoners of war. To call a prisoner of war a slave would be an insult although they acted no differently than black people acted under slavery. Although the adjusted definitions use different words to define the word slave, it still comes down to the same thing. The following are the main phrases used to define and redefine the word slave before and after 1993. Before 1993 divested of all freedom, lost power of resistance, wholly subject to the will of another, wholly under the control of another, one who surrenders himself to any power whatever. After 1993, a bondservant, property, abjectly subservient, a machine that depends on another, chattel, to work hard, an adjective. The adjusted definitions are not that much different from the original definition. The words used to redefine a slave may seem more acceptable, but if we think about it, they are not. What does abjectly subservient mean? What is chattel? We were not their property. It is not about what they call us. It's about what we call ourselves. If we believe our ancestors were slaves, we must call ourselves descendants of slaves, and we will act according to what we think we are. Confusion in the language. Quote, I know you believe you understand what you think I said, but I am not sure you realize 
that what you heard is not what I meant, unquote, Robert McCloskey. By the misapplication of the words slave and slavery to other forms of human servitude, we have been manipulated into accepting and applying the word slave to our ancestors and indirectly to ourselves. Because there are beliefs inside of beliefs and thoughts inside of thoughts, on the subconscious level, we have inadvertently swallowed the blue pill. We have drank the Kool-Aid. We have programmed our computer with a hidden virus. Just as there is fake news, there is also fake history. It is the product of misinterpretation. It is invoked by misunderstanding the words slave and slavery. How do we decide which information to accept or reject? How do we decide what information works for us? Can a human being own another human being? If someone says, I own you, does that make it true? Does the fact that people can be held against their will mean they are owned? If a person resists a force to any degree, does that keep them from being a slave to that force? Can a person be in slavery and not be a slave? Can a person not be in slavery and be a slave? Can a slave own a slave? When we call our ancestors slaves, what does it say about their spirit and their character as a people? What does it say about us as their descendants? If a person believes that he or she is a descendant of slaves, will they act accordingly? Statements that mislead. I have read and heard people say slavery was common for thousands of years before the transatlantic slave trade. When people say this, they are confusing the different types of human servitude and trafficking with the system called slavery. Slavery was a different type of system designed to make slaves of Africans. It was a form of trafficking and bondage that required new words which were developed in the mid 1400s. It could not have been common for thousands of years when no other form of human trafficking like it existed. We have read and heard historians say, black people own slaves in Africa and America. First of all, by our unalienable rights given to us by God, nature, and our ancestors, no human being can own another human being. Just because people can be bought and sold, it does not necessarily make them slaves. In America, black people who paid for black people did so to protect the ones they bought from a cruel system. People can buy rights and privileges, but not human beings. Most of the black people who purchased other black people were family or related to each other in some way. I saw this one on the internet. Native Americans owned thousands of black slaves. Some black Africans did escape from farms and plantations and join Native American tribes. Being that their cultures were more alike than different, they worked and lived together according to the cultures of Native Americans. How could Native Americans own, control, and treat black Africans like slaves when their own land was being taken and at the same time they were being forced to live on reservations and be dependent on the American government? The purpose of slavery was for the mass production of commodities and products. Native Americans were not into mass production. Therefore, they had no need to treat black people like slaves. In general, Native American cultures did not even believe in land ownership, not to mention the ownership of people. I have read and heard people use the term chattel slavery. It implies that there are different types of slavery. When slavery was a different type of human trafficking and servitude, chattel slavery implies that people are treated like cattle. However, it is clear that Europeans and Euro-Americans did not even treat their cattle like they did black African people.
If a cow or a horse ran off, they did not chop off a foot or beat them almost to death in front of other cattle. Other terms like sex slave, Hebrew slave, Egyptian slaves, and the use of the word slave in the Bible are misleading. In fact, the word slave did not even exist when the Bible was written. The laws and combination of elements they lived under do not add up to the conditions, circumstance, and criteria that Africans lived in under slavery. Their captivity was not based on race. This is a fact recognized by Chancellor Williams and many other African-American historians as well as European-American historians. As racism still exists, and as we look at the reasons why we shouldn't call the ancestors of American Africans slaves, we might think that the confusion in the language is a natural byproduct of the thought process behind slavery. It looks like a conspiracy. If the reverse psychology doesn't work, maybe confusion will. If we believe we are the descendants of slaves, we will act accordingly. We must consider the fact that what we have been taught about our history comes from people who have been educated in Euro-American institutions. They teach and earn a living in these institutions. If they do not conform to the standard curriculum, they could be fired. Therefore, they tend to look at African and African-American history through Euro-American eyes, without even being conscious of it. They sometimes teach and promote the propaganda of slavery, racism, and white supremacy. What is the difference between a prisoner, a hostage, a captive, and a slave? What is the difference between slavery and other forms of human captivity and servitude? To apply the word slavery to other times and situations waters down and distorts the true meaning of slavery and slave. Statements that are misleading can only add to the confusion. Some people say that correcting the error of calling the ancestors of black American Africans slaves is a matter of semantics. Semantics does not mean a trick in the use of words and language. When we use words that are important to the conversation, we should make sure that we have a common understanding. The definition of semantics means the study of the meaning of words and sentences and how they are interpreted. Therefore, Correcting this error is a matter of semantics. If we all put the meaning we want on words and do not have a common understanding, our thinking and communications will be confusing and misleading. So, let us be clear and precise on the names we apply to our ancestors and indirectly to ourselves. This is the end of part two. In part three, we will look at two of the four main reasons why we shouldn't call our ancestors slaves. Thank you for listening and watching. If you like this video audio book, please press the like icon and share. See what your friends think. Please subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified when more videos come available. Also, your comments are most welcome.